uh, when I was a very small boy, uh, maybe around uh, fourth, fifth uh, grade, uh, my brother who was uh, uh, studying elsewhere, when he came on leave, he bought a, a small uh, packet for me which contained a kit which will be assembled to form a dynamo. It had uh, uh, several small parts, some copper wires with the enamel, uh, some core objects and the brackets and uh, uh, and a magnet and a board on which these could be fixed and of course there was a, a device to construct the brush etc so uh, we both were excited and uh, we worked on it for two days he uh, explained to me patiently and we constructed the dynamo uh, uh, we had to wind the coil and uh, make everything step by step. It was great fun and it was great learning experience and uh, uh, that opened uh, uh, my uh, core interest to the subject of uh, electronics, electricals, electronics and so on and so forth uh, at a very young age. So somehow I, I was reminded of uh, that incident when I was go making this lesson so I thought I would share with you. Today's lesson is beginning to a revolution in everything uh, in this world. We are going to start on the electromagnetic radiation. As you all know, nowadays everything is wireless communication. Everything happens because of our knowledge which we have gained about this propagation of this uh, electromagnetic waves. So uh, this is uh, introductory lesson and we are going to follow up with a series of lessons and it's a fantastic world by itself and I'm sure each one of you are going to enjoy uh, uh, going through these lessons. Uh, let's uh, go through some history yeah, somewhere in 1860s uh, and 70s a Scottish scientist called James Maxwell he he came out uh, the theory the basic theory of uh, electrical fields and magnetic fields and he also pro uh, proposed that these uh, two uh, fields can uh, couple together for, uh, to form the basic electromagnetic waves of course till then it was in uh, uh, theory and uh, subsequently a german physicist uh, called heinrich hertz uh, he demonstrated he demonstrated this theory uh, of uh, electromagnetic wave uh, of production and reception of the radio waves uh, in fact till date uh, the unit of frequency uh, of the radio wave is called named uh, after the scientist and it's called Hertz so it was he who actually demonstrated the existence or the possibility of electromagnetic wave uh, let me try and explain uh, wh what is uh, basic of this uh, electromagnetic wave in brief so let's uh, go back to the production of alternating current the alternating current is produced by rotating a loop of wire in a magnetic field or vice versa. You can al also rotate a magnetic field in which uh, uh, electrical loop is uh, kept. Either way, uh, the fields will cut and uh, it will produce some uh, effect which is what we will see. Now when the fields cut through each other, that is the magnetic field and the electrical uh, loop uh, is cut through each other electrons flow along the wire in accordance with the alternating uh, voltage pr uh, produced uh, in one direction for the first half of the rotation and in the reverse direction in the second half of the rotation this means that the intensity of uh, the current or the voltage produced is constantly fluctuating it gradually rises to a peak and then comes back because it's a ro rotational uh, uh, movement the changing current 
in turn produces the fields along the wires. So that results in electromagnetic wave which has got its own characteristics which we what we are going to study. Basically we want to understand that this alternating effect of the current is what gives rise to uh, the EM waves. Obviously this is not going to be produced by DC direct current. Here uh, I, I uh, created a small animation to uh, uh, clarify the concept a little bit more clear. There is a magnet which has got a north and south end which, which is rotating and there, either side there are two coils uh, in which this magnetic field is going to uh, cut. It is going to fluctuate and then cut. Also as the animation goes on, as the magnet rotates, you will find that arrows are visible in which the current is uh, flowing. The electrons are flowing therefore resulting in a uh, current flow. It is a very small animation uh, just to uh, uh, clarify the concept in, in a more clear uh, manner. Uh, we just saw how the alternating uh, current is uh, produced. Now when such an alternating current is applied or transmitted on an aerial as shown, it transmits a wave form which is as shown, which is, which is what we, uh, 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 we call the electromagnetic uh, wave. So an alternating current with when applied on an aerial, uh, of course the aerial length has to be appropriate and so several other things are there. But just to understand, if you apply it to an aerial, a resulting waveform is, uh, uh, is called the electromagnetic uh, wave because it will have several characteristics uh, which will vary according to the number of times the magnet rotates and how fast, how how strong is the magnetic field, how uh, uh, so on and so forth, which is what this EM wave is all about. So that, that's what we are going to learn in this lesson. Now uh, let's go through the characteristics of such uh, waves which are uh, produced, these electromagnetic waves. Now I have taken one portion, one, one cycle so called one series of uh, such fluctuation and I have shown a, a figure as uh, uh, you can see there is an x axis, there is a y axis and the z axis and there is a electrical component which is denoted by the capital E uh, which is which varies along the y axis uh, that it is travels along the x axis but varies along the y axis that means it gradually rises and then drops comes back to zero level and then goes down and then comes up back to zero level. Similarly, there is another component called the magnetic component which is denoted by the capital H letter which again uh, varies along the z axis but travels along the uh, x axis. So, this is the combined waveform that means this combined waveform has got an electrical component and a magnetic component which travel at 90 degrees to each other in, in, in that plane and they uh, uh, vary in uh, signal strength uh, according to uh, uh, what has been shown. So this is a uh, this is what is the composite of the electrical uh, and magnetic wave which is called the electromagnetic wave. Okay, here I have tried to show uh, a combination of such uh, waves as you can see along the x axis is the direction of travel of the wave. And uh, here I have shown in blue color the electrical component and uh, the red color the magnetic component. And now it is a little bit more clear that they are at uh, 90 degrees to each other in their plane and uh, 
also the direction of travel is uh, very important so this is how the propagation of uh, em waves uh, travel they they are uh, they have components at 90 degrees to each other and a vertical component and travel in one plane and the horizontal component that is a magnetic component travels in another plane uh, and uh, and also a very important discovery and which i must mention that these electromagnetic waves travel at a constant velocity of 3 into uh, 10 to the power 8 meters uh, per second well not exactly uh, well for all practical purposes we can assume that they travel at a constant velocity of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second let's go on let's uh, learn some more about uh, the em waves let me introduce you to the first uh, definition or a concept or a the characteristics of an em wave that is the cycle now i have taken a single uh, uh, wave form uh, on the x axis is uh, the direction of propagation so called and the y axis is how it uh, fluctuates from the zero point it rises to a maximum value and then drops comes back to uh, x axis and then it comes down to drops to a negative value uh, and rises and comes back to the x axis and reaches a value of zero this complete uh, series is called one cycle so a cycle is a series of signal strength pattern which rises and drops of course uh, on the positive uh, side is called the positive uh, energy and what is called on the uh, below the x, uh, negative side is called the negative energy uh, another terminology uh, or a characteristic called amplitude now observe the wave uh, uh, along the uh, uh, y axis it rises in signal strength and reaches a maximum value this maximum value is called the amplitude and uh, it can be plus uh, positive amplitude negative amplitude anyway the value which uh, reaches is called the amplitude so uh, now he, in, in, i have shown another picture there are three waveforms which i shown in uh, white yellow and green color these three waveforms have the same cycle same length uh, wavelength uh, which we will see later but they are at different amplitudes so that's the point which i uh, wanted uh, to clarify that uh, waveform can exist in different amplitude of course that dependent on the uh, uh, voltage uh, when it was produced or the uh, strength of the magnetic flux etc etc okay i, I mentioned about the wavelength uh, earlier now let me explain the uh, wavelength uh, in more uh, detail wavelength it is usually uh, denoted by the greek uh, letter lambda and uh, it is a physical distance traveled during a cycle so uh, it rises and uh, uh, comes to zero and then goes to a negative comes back to zero and this the distance traveled during such a cycle is called wavelength now again i have shown another picture just to make this clear in this again i have shown three waveforms uh, one in yellow one in white and green which have got the same amplitude but different wavelength so uh, you can have uh, waveforms with a different wavelength uh, with same amplitude different amplitude with the same wavelength etc etc all this is uh, 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 is clear only because uh, uh, it is it travels at a constant uh, velocity which we are going to uh, see the concept further uh, let me introduce you uh, to the concept called frequency 
frequency is nothing uh, it is denoted by uh, the symbol as shown uh, fox uh, f uh, symbol and it is the number of times this waveform uh, is uh, propagated number of times that means one series uh, uh, of rise and drop and coming uh, rise drop go to negative coming back to zero is one cycle as we defined so the number of times this such a thing takes place in a unit time in our case it will be one second so uh, this is called the frequency so uh, since the velocity uh, is uh, same on the x axis uh, we can understand that the frequency and wavelength are highly correlated uh, so uh, it can so the x axis can depict either the frequency or the wavelength since the velocity is constant so uh, that's what is called the frequency of the em wave okay, let us establish a very simple uh, relationship nothing great uh, velocity as i told you since it's a constant so it it is equal to frequency into the wavelength and uh, which uh, for all practical purpose we can consider it as 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second of course the unit of uh, frequency uh, uh, that is number of cycles per second is hertz and uh, wavelength uh, it, it can be in meters it, it is in meters uh, so and of course the unit of time is in seconds so that's the velocity and the correlation between uh, the parameters which we defined okay uh, let's uh, go through some more interesting characteristics uh, um, we will learn something called the phase of the wave the phase refers to any position uh, uh, or, uh, of the waveform at any point in time uh, when we want to refer to it. It's, it's uh, referred to as a, a certain number of degrees from the start or the amplitude of the wave of a certain angular position would be same for every cycle. So uh, let me explain. Uh, there is an x-axis and uh, there is a y-axis and we already uh, learnt how the waveform uh, is uh, progressing. I have shown here one cycle and uh, it is often referred, not often, it is referred to as a sine wave because it varies as the sine, uh, the signal strength varies as the sine of the position if you were to consider it in terms of degrees that means uh, let's uh, explain it further let's see the point on x-axis where I have shown 90 that is the 90 degrees so uh, sin 90 is uh, value is 1 that is maximum value therefore the amplitude of the wave has reached the maximum uh, similarly sin uh, 180 will be 0 sin 0 will be 0 and sin 360 also will be 0 where the amplitude of the wave is at x axis so it the value is zero so uh, this is what is called the phase so very often uh, we uh, refer and there is an utility in measuring this phase of the wave very uh, so which we are going to see as the applications uh, which we will see Okay, uh, let me explain something called the phase uh, difference. Let us consider two different uh, waveforms having the same uh, frequency, same frequency. Here I have shown two uh, waveforms, one in red and one in uh, blue. Uh, uh, but of course, they are individual phases as they propagate it uh, or as they uh, travel forward is different in this case they are at a difference of 90 degrees as you can see that means at the starting point where the red waveform is at zero the blue waveform is at 90 degrees and as you continue to follow the wave it's constantly at a difference of 90 degrees so this is called the 
face a difference. Uh, obviously, you can only uh, compare the phase uh, uh, between two waveforms of the same frequency. Uh, it's not possible if the frequencies were to be different. This very characteristic is uh, being used uh, in some applications in some of the avionic equipment, uh, which we are going to uh, learn it in great detail. Uh, let me explain another characteristics uh, called polarization. It's nothing very great. Uh, the polarization is uh, the plane in which the electrical component uh, travels is the plane of polarization. If it is traveling in a vertical uh, plane, then we call the uh, wave to be uh, vertically polarized. And if it travels in the horizontal plane, then we call it horizontally polarized. Why is it important for us to have the, such knowledge? Uh, because the reception at the re receiving end, the uh, uh, antenna has to be placed accordingly. The orientation of the receiving antenna has to be placed in a vertical plane or a horizontal plane uh, uh, so as to have the best uh, reception. Uh, is it is it fixed not necessary in some uh, in some cases this the whole waveform itself is rotate about its axis and such a waveform is called uh, or it is uh, known to be circularly polarized uh, this is very useful uh, in uh, some applications such as weather radar to uh, uh, cut down some clutter and uh, things like that of course, uh, we are going to learn uh, later this, this aspect. As usual, let us sum up the lesson with the numerical, one or two numerical examples to clarify the concept. As I uh, been mentioning uh, that uh, free, uh, the velocity of the EM waves are constant. Uh, so uh, the, the first numerical, uh, let's see it. What is the wavelength of a wave whose frequency is 300 megahertz? Now, let me warn you, it's a very simple uh, numerical. But only thing is what you have to be careful about is the units in which you work. So everything has to be converted to uh, uniform uh, in meters and frequency in hertz. And uh, then you will never go wrong. So let's uh, do this uh, problem. Velocity is equal to frequency in wavelength. Uh, so wavelength is equal to uh, velocity upon uh, uh, divided by uh, frequency. That is uh, 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 300 into uh, 10 to the power 6 it, since it is 300 megahertz. So, uh, it's very clear that it works out to 1 meter. Let's uh, go through another numerical example. Uh, again, it's a very simple one. What's the frequency of a wave whose wavelength is 1.5 kilometers? As I forewarned you, we must work, uh, be very careful in units. First of all, so 1.5 kilometers is one point uh, uh, five into thousand that is one thousand five hundred uh, meters right so let's uh, go through the uh, numerical velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength so frequency equals uh, three into ten to the power eight upon one thousand five hundred meters uh, that equals uh, two uh, uh, as shown two hundred kilohertz uh, as uh, I have derived. Uh, it's very simple uh, and uh, uh, you be careful of the uh, units and you are you are through any such problem fairly easily. We come to the end of the lesson and uh, I'm sure you found the lesson very interesting. It's a very simple introductory lesson. Uh, because I wanted this to be catering to varied section of uh, people. Therefore, 
uh, it has been kept uh, at uh, such a simple level. So as we progress, you will find that the le lessons uh, get more and more interesting as you uh, we are going to see the properties and uh, the applications and the spectrum. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting uh, as we go along. So enjoy the lessons which, uh, which we are going to follow. Uh, and uh, uh, by all, uh, I will request you to go through my uh, YouTube channel and my website for several other lessons which we have been creating and uh, uploading. And uh, pass it on to as many people so that many, many of uh, people can benefit from uh, uh, learning uh, these uh, subjects. I thank you all for uh, going through the lesson patiently.